Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at functional groups. And functional groups appear nearly in every molecule you'll see from AS, A2, etc. It doesn't matter what you're studying, um, functional groups appear there. Um, but we're going to look at um, the functional groups that um, are, appear in mainly in AS chemistry. So these are the simple ones here. Um, but there are uh, a lot more functional groups um, and specifically for A2 chemistry as well that you do need to know. Um, and we're going to go through the, um, the actual suffix and prefix in terms of naming them, nomenclature. Uh, we're going to give some examples and we're going to show you kind of what they look like as well when you to draw them out in a molecule. Now, I've got to emphasize that this video is only on functional groups. Um, it isn't on nomenclature, but there are other videos on nomenclature in the same playlist. So if you're not sure how to name the molecules, then I suggest that you have a look at them ones first um, before you start looking at these. So we've got um, a series of functional groups here, and you can see that we're going to start with alkenes. Now, alkenes have a single bond in between two carbons. They're given the um, suffix of A, so suffix means at the end, so we end the molecule in A, and depending on how many carbons we have will depend on how we call it. So, for example, we've got two carbons here, so we call that ethane. And the next one is alkenes, they have a double bond between the two carbons, we end it in E, and so for example we've got ethene over there, which is C2H2, and you can see there's the first two there, alkenes and alkenes, so they have a double bond. And the next one is cycloalkenes, so cycloalkenes are actually can be formed as a functional group um, of um, alkenes. So a functional group isomer, sorry, of, al of alkenes. So um, you can um, loop them back up together again. Um, in terms of naming, you put cycle first, then whatever the alkene is that you've actually formed in cyclic form. So for example, you might have cyclopentane, which have five carbons, uh, all looped around in the ring. So we call that cyclopentane um, because it's in a cycle. Um, and that's how they look like there. But you can get other ones like cyclobutane, cyclohexane, cyclohexane, etc. And you can go on. Um, the next one is branched alkenes. Now, branched alkenes are effectively just a standard uh, alkene, so a standard chain length with uh, branches of um, alkyl groups coming off them. So um, there's an example there. So you can see we've got three carbons there, and we have a branched alkyl group coming off the middle of that carbon. But it can appear elsewhere. And, actually the position of that branching does matter and uh, when you do nomenclature you do need to actually number it for some molecules as well. So we call these branched alkenes and all we do is we put alkyl depending on what the actual branch is. So for example this one here we've got methyl propane where we have three carbons and hanging off the middle carbon is a methyl group. Um, if, that was, um, if that was longer then that could be methyl hexane for example and um, you'd have to say where that methyl group is in terms of the numbering. Um, the next one is haloalkanes, and as the name suggests, halo means halogen, so that's your group seven halogens. So haloalkane, um, you would have, um, you would name it basically the halo bit. So for example, it could be chloro, and then what every alkane is, or bromo, or iodo, um, and it's normally given the form like this: CX, where X stands by stands for the halogen. So in this case, we've got chloropropane. So we've got three carbons, which makes it a propane, with a chlorine stuck at the end of it, so we call that chloropropane. But you can have bromopropane, iodopropane, fluoropropane if you wanted as well. Um, the next one is alcohols. Alcohols have the OH group on the end. They end in all. Um, so for example, you might have something like ethanol, which is two carbons with an OH on the end. There's your alcohol there with an OH. And the next one is aldehydes. So aldehydes are actually an oxidized version of an alcohol. And they have this carbonyl group that's on the end of them. So you can see it on here in a bigger version. So you have this carbonyl group here. Um, and this is always at the end of your carbon chain. And that's what makes them an aldehyde. So if you see this at the end of a carbon chain, um, you know it's an aldehyde. You end it in al. Um, so for example, you might have ethanol, where you have CH3, CHO. Um, that's called ethanol. Um, you can form um, ketones as well. And ketones are are pretty much the same as an aldehyde, except the carbonyl group is in the middle of your molecule. So you can see here, and um, you've got three carbons there. There's your carbonyl group stuck in the middle of your carbon. Um, and we end ketones in own. So for example, you might have propanone. So CH3, CO, CH3. Um, carboxylic acids is the next group. Again, these are linked quite closely because we're involved in oxidation of alcohols. Um, so you can see here um, that we have an ending of oic acids, 
Um, and our ethanoic acid, for example, um, is, a, is a way in which we can use that um, suffix at the end. So ethanoic acid would be CH3COOH. So you've got two carbons, so stands for the east bit, uh, and then oic acid or, um, goes at the end. So there's your ethanoic acid there, or there's the carboxylic acid, sorry, um, which is a C double bond O and an OH at the bottom. And the next one are esters. Now esters are formed from reacting a carboxylic acid and an alcohol together, and they come in two parts. Um, you can see we have an R bit here, and we have the um, carbon bit here. Now the R bit could be methyl, it could be ethyl, propyl, etc. It could be any length. This is the bit that's actually come from the alcohol. Um, but there are videos that look into how you make an ester, but I'm not going to go into that um, for this video. So basically an ester uh, ends in aisle and then O8. So for example, the R bit is named first. So if that was a methyl group on there, you would do methyl. And then if you had three carbons coming off there, uh, that would be propanoate. So there's an example there. So you name esters back to front. Um, the next one are ethers. Now ethers have this, um, what you'd probably describe as an oxygen sandwich. Uh, it's sandwiched between two carbons. It's very nutritious. Um, and your oxygen um, sits in between your two carbons. We call that an ether. Um, and the prefix that we give to that is called alkoxy. So depending on um, what the um, the group is on the left hand side of the oxygen, that's the bit you name first, and then you go along to the right. So for example, this one would be um, methyl, uh, this one here would be methoxypropane. So we have a methyl group, which is on here, uh, and then you've got three carbons there, which make it as propane. So we call that methoxypropane. And um, you might see this in AS when you do um, a functional group isomerism of an alcohol, uh, and one example would be of an ether. And um, the last one, which you really don't see a lot of in AS actually, but it might come up as a specific example, um, you do arenes mainly in A2 chemistry, so a little bit later on. Um, but you can see we've got our arene. Arenes are um, effectively just six carbons with three double bonds alternating in the, in the um, in that hexagon. Uh, and we've give, given the formula C6H6, so that's a molecular formula. Um, the word that we put on the end of it um, is uh, the suffix is benzene. Uh, and you might have, and there it is there, look. So you might have a methyl group hanging off that benzene ring there. Uh, and you could call that methyl benzene. So you've got a methyl group hanging off your benzene compound. Um, that's it, really. Uh, that, like I say, it is a very quick, uh, just a quick overview of the functional groups that you do need to know and how you name them. And just a few examples so uh, you know how they actually work in terms of nomenclature. But um, you do need to know all these functional groups. You do need to know how to draw them. And that's the mode there on the right-hand side. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.